Welcome to AM Reviews. I'm Skybear, and I'm here with my buddy Sal. What's up, Sal? Not much. And this is Movie Roundup. These are movies we didn't have time to do a full review of, so this is just a short recap. And our movie rating system is in the description in case you want to follow along. So, what did we watch, Sal? Well, I watched Battle of the Sexes. How was that? I want I wanted to check that out. <laughs> I think I enjoyed it because um, I really love tennis and I used to play tennis when I was in high school. Mm. Um, I even followed up in college just on my own, not in the team. So it got my attention. Plus Emma Stone, she really took the role and the, she became the character. The same thing with the rest of the cast. Uh, they were amazing. It actually made you feel like you were uh, there. And then the whole thing was that it, I thought it was going to play more into the tennis match, but it actually played more into her personal life and how she her sexual orientation came to be so i gave it an 8.5 out of 10 okay yeah i'll i'll check it out when i when i got well when i have the time yeah it's a definitely must see if you uh want to check it out it's a recommendation Mm. uh next movie i saw was american assassin Mm. this is uh jason Bourne, but a little lower yeah, kind that's, of... that's kind of the vibe I got from the trailer. <laughs> that I, I skipped it. <laughs> Some scenes just don't make sense. It just goes from point A to point B. The teacher says, don't do this, but he does it. Even the teacher does it himself. So it's like, what's going on? Plus, some other parts to me didn't make much sense. So I gave it a 6.5 out of 10. Hmm. Then the next one I saw was American Made, uh, Tom Cruise. If you see Narcos... Then this is the pilot who goes back and forth, uh, the American or the gringo. I like this movie, so um, as a fan from Narcos, so I gave it a 7.5 out of 10. If you've seen Narcos, you probably want to see this one because it gives you more of a backstory on the character Barry. And uh, the next movie I saw was Napping Princess. This is another anime movie that uh, recently came out. It takes place in Japan, and it's about a girl who every time she dreams... She's told a story when she was a little girl about a napping princess who has a magical tablet that she can bring things to life. Huh, that sounds delightful. <laughs> no, the actual story behind it, because there's two parts, the dream world and the real world. Mm. The real world is about, uh, takes place kind of present time. Uh, and the Olympics are coming soon. It's going to be in Japan. In the movie, there's a car company who has cars that are going to be auto driven by themselves and they're going to go into the stadium but the technology is not there yet except the technology was created by somebody in the movie the blueprints and everything are on this tablet so it's a magical tablet so it's basically like the key uh and it's up to the girl to keep it safe away from the bad guys so in the dream world she fights the bad guys which is people from the car company so in a sense i liked it because it's actually a real place in japan it's a real town Mm. Once I went to see it, um, they told me this beforehand and they showed me pictures. There's a bridge. There's a, a real bridge. And they actually show it in the movie, the town. It's really sketched to detail. Um, so it's kind of brings you into a real place, but hand drawn. So in that sense, I gave it an 8 out of 10. The story is go- good. It's heartwarming. Uh, it's a good message. And plus, um, it's like you go to Japan while watching the movie but you don't really do it because it's a cartoon but it's based off a real place in japan well it sounds good man if that makes sense if that makes sense i'm kind of i don't know rambling on but no it sounds it sounds good dude (laughs) and the next movie i went to go see it's a spanish movie it's named uh como cortar a patan or the english title how to get rid of a (laughs) douchebag this is a comedy it's a spanish comedy i went to go see it with my parents because I wanted to for them to go see a, a Spanish movie. Mm. I saw it. I enjoyed the the, the jokes. Um, but some of the jokes did not get translated correctly because there's English subtitles. So when I was listening to the Spanish audio and reading the subtitles, they didn't match. I mean, I know there's some jokes that, you know, they're lost in translation. But at the same time, I'm, my parents enjoyed it. I kind of enjoyed it. But here's uh, what I gave it a 7.5 out of 10. Um, the reason I went to go see it was because Diego Luna's ex-wife is in the movie. 
And that's basically what caught my attention. I'm like, hey, that's Diego Luna's ex-wife. Um, I might go check out this movie because we saw Flatliners and Diego Luna sucked in it. So let's see how she does in her movie. Hey, Diego Luna was was just fine in that. It's just the movie sucked. <laughs> no, it's his fault because he took the role. And <laughs> He did his okay. best, okay? <laughs> well, I mean, I, I give him that and uh, he still redeemed himself because he's in Star Wars. So And that's... he's the... And he's Diego goddamn Luna. <laughs> <laughs> it's like with Gail Garcia Bernal. Just just like, no matter what, it's not your fault. It's the movie's it's fault. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then uh, moving on. The next movie I saw was American Satan. This movie's about, uh, it's about an up-and-coming rock group who comes to California, to actually Hollywood, tries to make it big in, the, in these clubs to the point where they actually meet the devil or they might not meet the devil so it's basically the way you see it uh there's a guy who appears and says that he's the devil he wants to make a contract with these kids or teenagers to basically promote them and they'll be huge stars and this and that and all they have to do is just basically like sign on the dotted line Mm -hmm. the whole movie to me seems like you can see it from two points of view the real point of view which could be that there is a real devil and he's always influencing music because metal and rock always talks about the devils, you know, 666 and all the cults and stuff. Or maybe the guy who calls himself devil is just another agent who's just making, you know, people sign on the line. And the stuff that happens is just by coincidence. At the end of the movie, there's some after credits. It's basically just quotes. Famous people have said in interviews, you know, ca- talking about the devil or the supernatural powers behind music, which mm. leads to people to believe that there might be something to it. At the end, the movie ends off in a pretty gnarly way that I, I'm not going to spoil it, but I gave it an 8.5 out of 10. Mm-hmm. So I enjoyed it greatly. Uh, nice. Next movie I saw was uh, Victoria and Abdul. Yeah. Uh, that looked, well, that's, well, I've seen that like floating around theaters around here. How was it? I actually liked it. I gave it an 8 out of 10. I mean, the story actually, from what I heard, was that it was recently in 2010, the family found journals of this servant meeting the queen and became her personal friend. I don't know if it's true. Maybe it could be a fake journal, this and that. But according to the movie, he made the Queen Victoria's life a little more joyful. It's a heartwarming movie because, you know, you basically want her to be happy. She looks sad and he comes along and introduces her, you know, her to other joys around the world. Basically, more than anything, he's a really good friend to her. And that's what a lot of people need nowadays. Obviously, she needed that. Mm. So, yeah, it's a strong strong 8 out of 10 for me nice next uh up is medea's boo to oh god why sal <laughs> and here's the reason i why went to you, i went to go to see <laughs> another movie but i ended up getting there late and instead of coming back home and you know wasting my night i said what else is playing medea boo too and i said i'll go see it i gave it a 5 out of 10 jokes don't fit well it's basically another scary movie or another movie making fun of horror movies but it's two bars below it's not great doesn't play well twist don't fit and i don't know why but tyler perry i mean i I respect the guy but it just seems to me that he's still milking the eddie murphy's clumps to death here it's just really excruciating to i couldn't even sit there without moving and going like this is really bad i mean Man, I'm surprised you made it through the whole movie. <laughs> I did. The only thing was that there was people sitting on the end of the aisle. So if, if it wasn't for them, I would have probably just walked it out. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, other people seem to be laughing at the jokes. But I'm telling you, the jokes were like funny and they kept going. And then after a while, they keep playing on that joke. And you're like, hey, OK, it's not funny anymore. Mm. Or it's the same character, you know, the girl with the dark hair popping every two minutes and scaring them. And I'm like, yeah, move on. Do another thing, another franchise, you know, make fun of something else instead of just one movie. So in that sense, it was just a bad movie. Then my next movie I went to go see, it's a documentary. It's uh, Hitchcock 78 slash 52. This movie is about the infamous cycle scene, the shower scene. And they talk about 78 takes and 52 cuts. 
of that scene and they dissect it and they basically butcher it and analyze it with producers, directors, cinematographers from the industry. And they're talking about how this was made. It was well planned and everything. Even though Hitchcock said that he made Psycho as a joke, they don't believe it. They know that he did it on purpose and he thought a lot about this scene to the point where they actually say this is how clever he was and point out little parts and pieces of the scene. So I enjoyed it a lot. Um, I gave it an 8.5 out of 10. The reason I gave it that was because sometimes the comments that people were giving while they were talking just seems like they were just trying to kiss ass Mm -hmm. and say, this is the greatest movie ever. Well, yeah, it is one of the greatest movies, but the greatest movie... I don't think so. But for its time, it was really well done. Amazing. Mm. So, yeah, 8.5 out of 10. Well, that sounds like an interesting documentary that, you know, like I would I would love to check that out, actually. <laughs> I actually recommend it. I think you should. Mm. Seems like seems like a cheaper film film school alternative. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it kind of feels, it feels that way. Right. And uh, we both saw the Lego Ninjago movie. Uh, I gave it a 5 out of 10. <laughs> I gave it a 7 out of 10. Mm, I'm sorry. Just ah, like I love the Lego movie. I love the Lego movie. And I love the Lego Batman movie. I think both of those are great. Yes. The Lego movie is the best one, though. But then with this one, I don't know. It just felt like they took like like four steps backwards in the, in the quality and just like made it really appeal to kids. I agree that this movie is not the best Lego movie. But I took my niece and she enjoyed it because of the franchise. She's seen the cartoon. The other reason I gave it a few points higher than you was because um, Jackie Chan was there. He was great. But the I thing mean, Jackie is, Chan's always great. Like <laughs> Yes. But then this is at the beginning. He's the shopkeeper, mm-hmm. which we've seen him as the shopkeeper in other movies, too. So this kind of made reference to that. But he's the voice of one of the Lego characters, mm-hmm. even though he can be understood that well in most of the movies. They make fun of it. But some of the jokes were just like, again, probably like a Medea one. They just took it too far and they killed the jokes. Some of the jokes were really funny Mm -hmm. i i busted out laughing but some other jokes they just killed it and some scenes just didn't play well yeah and like i love that each of these movies like has a like an underlying message you know with all of them but even still like that didn't even save it jack chan couldn't save this movie it was like just eh for me (laughs) yeah and then just another little tidbit at the end there isn't that um extra credit scene during the credits oh yeah we're we're jackie's catching all the cups (laughs) Yeah, so it's an outtake. Mm. You gotta have those Jackie Chan outtakes. <laughs> yeah, if you see it, go go stay for that. It's one of the more redeeming parts of the movie, I would say. Mm-hmm. And then we both saw Happy Death Day. Oh, God. Yeah, and we both gave it a 5 out of 10. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's one of those movies that um, you know where they're coming from. You know they're referencing Groundhog's Day. But what really killed it for me was the ending when they bring up the, hey, it's like Groundhog Day. Yeah, just, you know, your situation reminds me of Groundhog Day. It's like, I don't know what you're talking about. That movie with Bill Murray? Who's that? Just, uh, no, like, just why? Why did you put that in the movie? Yes. Uh, that that killed it for me. That just ruined No, and it. then the, the whole story, I mean, it's just, I thought it, it could have been better. Mm. Uh, could have been scarier just the fact that they played it the way they played it it's a scary movie but there's some funny scenes jokes and stuff like that no don't do that if it's going to be a scary movie just go with the scary factor Mm. don't go bouncing everywhere and then please by god don't don't make reference to groundhog's day and then like don't don't talk about the movie that you're ripping off that's just all in bad taste (laughs) We also saw The Foreigner, more Jackie Chan, of more course. More Jackie Chan. And I gave this a 7 out of 10. I gave it an 8 out of 10. Yeah, just for me, like, solid action movie. <laughs> yes, and another movie where he's he plays his age, but at the same time, he's showing that he still has the moves. Jackie Chan's always still got it. <laughs> he's still badass, so I just enjoyed it a lot. The only thing I do have to pick is... Um, 007's accent. Yeah, I don't know what was up with that. Yeah, it kind of bugged me through the whole movie. Yeah, but I mean, like, just get past that. Just watch Jackie Chan be cool. Just, have just watch popcorn. the action scenes. Yeah. They're like, really great. Just stay for the action. You don't, yes. just don't care about the story. <laughs> and we both saw The Snowman. 
Good God, the snowman oh, cell. Why? Why? Uh, that movie sucked, dude. <laughs> it had potential. It just it did. It... It, and like, and like, it had a killer cast too. Like, holy shit, they brought Val Kilmer back. And yes. damn, did you see how much weight Val Kilmer lost? Yes. Like, damn, shit. <laughs> No, the thing was that uh, the only issues with the movie, there were a lot of issues with it. Let's there were so many. <laughs> pacing. I, it was so weird. The pacing that... was weird. Like, the, the framing was weird. Like, just, uh, there's, like, The story too many... itself. There was, like, a shit ton of plot holes. <laughs> and it just kept bouncing from, you know, place to place, and I couldn't keep track where they were. And, like, at the very end, like, I just didn't care about anything that mm-hmm. happened. Where it's like, yeah, I don't care that you died. I don't care that they died. I don't care that you lost a finger. No, I, don't, I just don't give a shit. <laughs> you know, and I think that's what they were going for. They're like, ah, no one's going to care. Let's just resolve the whole movie in the last five minutes. Yeah, and I heard that production was rushed, too. So that, that didn't help either. So, yeah, this... Yeah, this movie was not dealt a great hand of cards. And then uh, I heard that this is a book series, and this is not even the first book. They started off no, way what? ahead. Yeah, it's they started like several books ahead. But I mean, Jack Reacher did the same thing too. So yeah, yeah. no, nobody cares. They just want to get the bestseller one made into the movie. <laughs> and I heard that they're, they're holding out to see if this is going to make enough money to make part two. Which I, I doubt. Don't it. <laughs> hold your breath. It's not. It's not great. No one's no one's yeah. gonna go see it and think it's a marvelous movie. Um, I gave it a five out of ten. Yeah, three, just a three out of ten. Just yeah. no, just don't waste your time for me. <laughs> Save your money. And then we saw the mountain between us. I gave it a four out of ten. I gave it a six point five out of ten. Yeah, just I don't know. Uh... I went into it thinking it was going to be a survivor story like The Grey, which is it's the same director from The Grey. And that's what I was thinking it was going to be. I completely agree. But then, like, once you're done with it, at least for me, I just feel like the like it should have been presented as, like, one of those Fabio book covers. Yes, yes. I Like, if it had that, you know, like, tone going throughout, like, all the promotion then that would have been a better representation of this movie. But then I also saw it from the point of view that it was the mountain was a symbol of the mourning that the guy was going through of his dead wife. And, um, you know, it kind of played Mm -hmm. that role that says, here's an obstacle. It's a mountain. You have to get over this death and move on. And he had to cross the mountain to see that Kate Winslet was in front of him and he fell in love with her. And here's the other thing that I kind of, gave it an extra point for was other movies would have ended once they you know got rescued but this went further and they went back to their normal lives and they found out that they couldn't live without each other and they basically met each other again and stayed together so it's more than a survival story is a romance story that i wanted to basically think that they did it on purpose to say look people have to in life metaphorically cross a mountain to get over somebody and see that there's other people out there so that's why i gave it us you know Mm. what i gave it okay i actually didn't think about that and then uh what other movies did you see skybear i saw home again and i wish that you know throughout all the promotion that they mentioned that every single major character is in the entertainment industry (laughs) (laughs) like reese witherspoon she's the daughter of a famous director her mother was an actress who was married to that director wow and what is it? Uh, the three boys that come to live with her, they're all filmmakers. And the ex-husband is a music producer. Like, none of this was mentioned. <laughs> but overall, the story. It was it was a good movie, I'd say. Like, not... Like, I was expecting it to, like, be terrible, actually. But no, it surprised me. I thought it was, I thought it was good. Oh, nice. And then I saw Suburbicon. That was... That that movie was not what I was expecting, uh, mainly because it wasn't in the trailers at, at, well, at all, either. Because um, there's a whole subplot about this black family that moves into Suburbicon, and then they're met up with racial tension throughout the entire movie. Huh. And it's all cut in between with Matt Damon's story. So it also kind of feels like two different movies mashed together, 
But then at the very end, it kind of ties it together. Oh, okay. And I believe that has to do something with the message of the movie, but oh. nah, I, I don't know. I just thought it was okay. <laughs> I'm still going to go see that movie. Uh, I was leaning towards to go see it. Now I'm, mm-hmm. I'm definitely going to go check it out, see how would I give it. Now that I know that there's an underlying story, I'm kind of curious about that. And then I just checked out Thank You for Your Service. How was that movie? I also gave it a 6 out of 10. Uh, I appreciated what they were doing with it, and I thought it was very well done. But overall, just, yeah, it was all right. <laughs> mm, interesting. I mean, it's cool to see a movie to that, you know, uh, portrays the coming, like, coming home and what happens after you're done with war. The aftermath. Because, yeah, the aftermath. Like, there's not too many movies that I can think of that, you know, portray that section of it. So I thought that was cool that this movie did that. Well, there was but, there was that other movie. Um, was it American Sniper? Yeah, yeah, uh, American Sniper. That's the other movie there. That was more like a half and half, I would say, because like most of like you know, a lot of it takes place like with him actually at war, and then the rest of it is like, oh yeah, I'm just dealing with shit. <laughs> oh okay, so this yeah. is basically completely the, the story after war. Yes, it's once just like once soldiers come home and once they have, um, like and once they have PTSD. And other problems like how they how they deal with that. So that's it for this movie roundup. Social media is in the description and hit us up if you have any questions. And remember, keep watching movies.